Hey y'all, so let's pick back up. Digging into a few more scriptures. I want to mark my place here in this first John 5 4 because I like it so much. We may come back to it and read it again. So I want to look at some more scriptures. We fell right up into the place this time. Um, so Jesus, right? Our Savior, Messiah forever defeated the powers and principalities that are wrestling against us. So we must look at ourselves through the eyes of our Father to see that He made us victorious before the battle even began. And I'm not um, ignorant. I know hard things. I got hard things going on in 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 my life. We, there's people have hard stuff going on, and to be quite honest, I think right now, where it's a harder season, the enemy is pressing in um, stronger and harsher because of the things that the Lord has in store for such a time as this, and so it becomes even more important that we press forward being courageous to trust that our God is good and that our God is faithful, which is what we can learn of him and his character when we read the scripture. So, um, we have to look at ourselves through the eyes of our Father. I want to go to Ephesians 1. This is one of my favorite prayers that Paul includes in his letters in, in any of the epistles. But here to the church of Ephesus, he, um, he says, For I always pray, we're in Ephesians 1, 17, I always pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you, what does that mean? That he would give you, that the Father would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, of insight into mysteries and secrets, and in the deep and intimate knowledge of Him. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can know and understand the hope to which He has called you, how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set-apart ones. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above rule and authority and every power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and world which are to come. And he has put all things under his feet and appointed him, Jesus, as the universal and supreme head of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself. How many times in those uh, 17 to 23, six verses, do we hear about his greatness and hear about his power? He says, for I pray that the Lord would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that you would have insight into mysteries and secrets, deep and intimate knowledge of him. That the eyes of your heart would be flooded with light so that you can know and understand. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe. Can you see that? Paul has seen it. 
which is what, you know, just thrust him to declare and preach the gospel all over um, the known world at the time. And so that's his prayer for believers. That's the Father's heart for us, that we would know, that we would understand how great and immeasurable and surpassing is the power that is at work in and for us. You have been made victorious. It's time for you to see it. It's time for me to see it. To wake up that our victory is part of what Jesus Christ has opened for us. We'll pick it for tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye, y'all.